Welcome to another Noble Review Session for students of AP Macroeconomics. In this video, we're going to go over how to read a balance sheet. There are two sides to a bank's balance sheet, also known as a T-account. One side represents the bank's assets, what the bank has, and the other side represents the liabilities and net worth. So let's say you put money into your bank, into your checking account. Those are known as demand deposits. So when you take, say, $20,000 worth of cash and you deposit it into your bank and it becomes a demand deposit, it's still part of the M1 money supply. If you were to take money out of the bank and convert it to cash, M1 does not change. So $20,000 you put into the bank. Now the bank has to keep part of that money on reserve. We call those required reserves. What is not required becomes excess reserves, and excess reserves can be lent out. So this bank currently has $3,000 required reserves, it lent out $12,000, and has $5,000 additional dollars in excess reserves. So what is the reserve requirement? Well, the Fed establishes a certain percentage of checkable deposits which the bank must hold on to. In this case, the reserve requirement set by the Fed is 15%. It's 15% because $3,000 divided by $20,000 in checkable deposits total works out to be 0.15 or 15%. So whenever you deposit money into this bank, they have to hold on to at least 15%. The rest can be lent out. Now this bank chose to hold on to additional $5,000. So in theory, this bank can lend out an additional $5,000. You probably already realized that it's called a balance sheet because both sides must balance after each transaction. So notice the liabilities are equal to $20,000, and when we add up all of the assets, 12,000 plus 5,000 plus 3,000, we get $20,000. Let's suppose that after you deposit your money into your bank account, you decide that you need some money to go buy some stuff. So you go to the bank and you withdraw $8,000 from your checking account. The bank is liable to pay you $8,000. That's why the demand deposits are liabilities. So we would subtract $8,000 from the $20,000 on the liability side. And the bank is going to pay you from its excess reserves and its required reserves. So this $8,000 goes to you and we subtract $8,000 from demand deposits. But how does the bank meet its reserve requirement? Well, if the demand deposits are now 12,000 because we subtracted the 8 from the liability side, it still has to keep 15% of 12,000. 15% of 12,000 is $1,800. So in order to meet the reserve requirement, this bank has to borrow money. Banks borrow money all the time. Banks borrow money from one another uh, through the federal funds interest rate, and sometimes Banks borrow money from the Federal Reserve at the discount rate. That's what the sheet looks like right after you take out that $8,000 from your checking account. Demand deposits down to $12,000, and then the reserves are gone because the bank paid you. So the $12,000 demand deposits equals the bank's loans of $12,000. So the next step, this bank needs to borrow 15% of $12,000, which would be $1,800, to meet the reserve requirement. Well, that wraps up this Noble Review session on a bank's balance sheet and how to make a couple adjustments to one. Now, the next step would be talking about the Fed buying bonds on the open market and how that would affect a bank's excess reserves, its lending potential, and the new checkable deposits that are created by the banking system. Well, good luck studying, and thank you for watching another Noble Review video.